This is Chainsaw Man Season 1 Recap, Part 3. Don't forget to click the notification icon to stay in tune with our latest videos. Let's begin. Previously, guns all over Tokyo appear, targeting key members of the special division starting with Makima. The main fight happened between Denji, Himeno Hayakawa, Power, and the Katana Man with his mysterious powerful accomplice. Himeno, after seeing Hayakawa on the brink of death, sacrifices herself to unleash the Ghost Devil. But even that was no match against the Snake Devil that is conjured by the mysterious blonde girl, whose name is later revealed as Sawatari. The girl orders the Katana Man to take Denji's heart, but before he can reach him, one of the Ghost Devil's severed hands reaches Denji and pulls his string. This stirs him up from certain death into a maniacal murdering machine that he is. He lunges at the Katana Man and the Katana Man charges back. Sawatari warns the Katana Man to not damage his heart as she calls for reinforcements. They shortly arrived, armed with guns. Denji captures one of them and unwittingly holds him hostage against the Katana Man. The Katana Man took the opportunity and briskly sliced Denji, along with the hostage, in half. Kurose and Tendo are waiting for Makima at the train station. When they're informed of the ambush, moments later, the train arrives and panicking passengers scurry out of it. Finally, a cloaked and bloodied figure emerges, and... It was Makima, alive and well. In Kyoto, Makima orders two agents to bring her ten convicts and reserve the place with the highest altitude in the city. There, she performs a ritual that obliterates a member of the enemy in exchange for a life, which apparently is what the convicts were for. One by one, the reinforcements called for by Sawatari explode into thin air, leaving a gross splatter of blood from where they had been standing. Sawatari and the Katana Man curse Makima, knowing that she could be the only person responsible for this. With only the two of them left, and the half-body of Denji, a member of the Secret Service, appears. Kobeni, with her speed, survived when Arai did not. Sawatari caused the Snake Devil to take care of her, but Kobeni displayed her impressive speed and reached Sawatari and the Katana Man. She manages to sever the Katana Man's hand and takes his sword to shoot him. Sawatari tries to take her, but fails to. She shoves her wounded accomplice into the car and drives off. Gobeni clings to Denji's severed torso and cries, vowing to tell Himeno that she will quit when she sees her again. Meanwhile, Makima heads back to Tokyo. There, an agent meets her to report that much of the special division have died and he informs her that due to the shortage of staff, she has been anointed commander of the whole Tokyo special division department. He also hands Makima his resignation letter, saying that staying in the secret service is as good as choosing to be killed. Makima turns and bids him goodbye. Power and Denji quarrel over an apple besides Hayakawa's hospital bed, who is now recovering. When they leave, Hayakawa summons the Curse Devil and asks him how long he has left to live. It tells him that he has two more years. He then tries to light up a cigarette, which now becomes a habit of his. Doing this, however, only made him remember Himeno. He breaks into anguished sobs reminiscent of her. Denji tries to get back into Hayakawa's room to retrieve his manga, but hesitates when he hears that Hayakawa is crying. This makes him reflect on himself about all of the people he had lost. He admits about being awfully sad when Pochita died, but doubts if he'll cry for power or even Hayakawa when they die. He considers how Makima's death will affect him and admits that he'll be sad for a few days, but return to enjoying things again after a while. He drops the thought and tells Power that they should go. Makima takes Denji and Power to be coached by a drunkard but powerful devil hunter from Special Division 1 named Kishibe. He asks them a series of questions about their stance on the recent deaths of their colleagues, to which they give indifferent and unsympathetic answers to. From those, he deduced the two of them are a rare breed, which is fantastic. Kishibe tells Makima that he can take it from there and starts off with training by breaking their necks. After this first lesson, he feeds them blood for them to regain their strength. He says that he hasn't trained devils like Power and Denji before. So when thinking about how to approach this, he remembers that he is the best devil hunter there is. So until they can beat him, he will continue to hunt them. Denji and Power, not fond of being talked down to, attack Kishibe. Kishibe effortlessly bashes his knife into Denji's head and slices Power's throat with such impressive speed that the two didn't see it coming until they were gasping for life on the ground. Kishibe feeds them more blood to recover and then hunts them again, and again, and again, until night finally settles into the sky. Kishibe calls it a day and tells them that they will train again tomorrow. Power estimates that they might have died more than 20 times that day, but wasn't entirely sure. As they walk back to their apartment, they thought of ways to outsmart him on the next training. 
The two agents from Kyoto enter Hayakawa's room and introduce themselves as agents sent by Makima to help coach the Special Division 4. They ask him if he considers quitting, but he merely replies that monsters that killed his family and partner are still out there, so why would he plan to quit? The next day, the agents take him to a prison facility where they imprison captured devils. This is so Hayakawa could make contracts with the devils to aid him in devil hunting. The first cell he enters is of the future devil. The next day, Power and Denji team up to ambush Kishibe in their apartment. The plan was sound, but the effect was futile, as Kishibe dodged all of their attacks. As he sipped a drink from his flask, he tells Denji the reason why they lost this time. Using too much of her blood to fight left Power anemic and weak, and they didn't see the attack coming. Still, he tells them that it was a good attempt, and that they should call it a day. This lowers Denji's guard, and he fails to see the knife hurled by Kishibe from across the room straight to his temple. As blood drips from his head, Kishibe tells him that B shouldn't trust anything a hunter says. Hayakawa tries to make a deal with the future devil. The devil looks into his future and chuckles. It tells him that he will lend him his power if Hayakawa will let him live in his right eye. He says that Hayakawa's death will be enjoyable to see. With that, they both make the deal. It's another day of training for Denji and Power, and they still don't stand a match with Kishibe. Kishibe tells them that in their next training, they will try to capture the snake devil and samurai sword that took the lives of Himeno and everyone else in the special division. In a meeting between Kishibe and Makima, Kishibe admits that he's getting attached to the two trainees, and the conversation drifts into a more serious tone. He tells Makima that he knows that she had anticipated the assault in the special division, but did nothing to stop it, but says that she will be excused as long as her interests serve mankind and are not selfish. Makima explained that she only wants to reduce the casualties caused by the devil to humans. Somehow, Kishibe senses that what she says is a lie. Makima sits in a room surrounded by garish men. She is making a deal with the Yakuza. The leader tells her that the attack was organized by the girl Sawatari, who gives the gun devil in exchange for guns. Makima tells the leader to list out the names of everyone in their organization. When he refuses, she shows him a bag containing eyeballs of family members of the organization to show that she is not to be messed with. When one of the men tries to attack her, she kills him with a glance. Sawatari and the Katana Man siege a building to lure the Special Divisions to them in an attempt to steal Denji's heart. The Special Division 4 unleashes their fiends over the zombies of Sawatari. The Shark Fiend can swim on any surface and has a shark for its head. The Violence Fiend wears a mask to contain poisonous gas that he emits. The Spider Devil grows eight legs and is frightening, and the Angel Devil drains the lifespan of anyone who comes in physical contact with it. Hayakawa orders that they should split up and find the Katana Man and Sawatari. In an ominous part of the building, he finds Sawatari. Sawatari orders the Snake Devil to spit out the Ghost Devil, which she then orders to kill Hayakawa. Hayakawa launches into a fight with it, and he holds out well enough. However, the hundreds of ghost hands were too much for him to keep up with, and it takes him by the neck. Sawatari orders the Ghost Devil to choke him to death. He's saved by Himeno, who offers herself to the Ghost Devil, which she is now part of. Hayakawa remembers that the Ghost Devil does not have eyes, so it uses fear to see its targets. After losing that fear, he's able to slay the Ghost Devil. While in the elevator, Power and Denji encounter a bunch of zombies in the 10th floor, where Power decides to go on a killing frenzy and abandon Denji. When Denji arrives at the 13th floor, he finds the Katana Man waiting for him. The Katana Man wants him to apologize for killing his grandfather, but Denji replies that he simply doesn't really care for him. With this, their fight ensues. The Katana Man takes the lead when he severs not one, but both of Denji's arms. He again makes Denji ask for forgiveness, but Denji doesn't yield. They launch at each other one last time, and Denji's last chainsaw falls off. But before the Katana Man realizes it, Denji whips out a chainsaw from his leg, and he meets his demise. Denji puts the Katana Man back together and restrains him. Then, Hayakawa appears. Since the police will take a while to come, Denji decides to have a little fun with them and asks Hayakawa to join. He says that since he shot Himeno, they can take turns kicking him in the nuts, and whoever makes him scream the loudest wins. Hayakawa, after giving it a second thought, decides that maybe Himeno would want him to do it for her. Makima reports to her superiors the events of the past days. She reports that Sabatari made a contract with the Gun Devil to deliver Denji's heart in exchange for guns. But before they could interrogate her, she was killed by the Snake Devil. Lastly, Makima reports that they were able to collect enough Gun Devil flesh in the previously sieged building, and the mass of the combined flesh has started to move towards its source. Thus, her superiors finally tell her that it's finally time to defeat the Gun Devil. And that was Chainsaw Man Season 1 Recap Part 3. If you enjoyed this recap, remember to hit that sub, click the like button, and comment down below to let me know what you think of the series. I'll see you in the next video.